Um, this quite possibly could turn out to be the strangest of my, uh, well so far anyway, my video 365s. Uh, my video a day, as it were. And this is prompted by um, two things. One, um, as you will know, in four days time, the film of Fifty Shades of Grey is released. Uh, to a lot of people have been talking about um, the fact that uh, reportedly B&Q have instructed their staff to read Fifty Shades of Grey so that they know what to expect people to be buying and things. Uh, I don't know how true that is. However, um, as many of you will know, for a number of years I have written about and studied uh, in an academic sense, and I would like to stress in an academic sense, <laughs> um, the whole uh, area of uh, what's called BDSM, bondage, discipline, sadism, masochism, uh, or fetish, uh, which is a nicer term. Um, so uh, I just wanted to cover this thing about people thinking that yeah, watch Fifty Shades of Grey, go out and buy some rope and chain and whatever uh, from B&Q. Um, I'm not slagging off B&Q, but I just wanted to go through a couple of things um, to, to clarify first. And obviously the first thing that anyone who knows me uh, will know that I always say about the, 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 the kind of S&M uh, scene um, is that it's not necessarily, in fact, it, it, it's, it isn't actually about sex. Uh, it's about trust, it's about respect, and it's about negotiation, and it's about um, fantasy and boundaries, and expressing, uh, sorry, expressing emotions in such a powerful uh, and sensual way. However, for many people that does also involve sex, so um, always play safe, okay? Condoms and lube. The reason for that is is, is sometimes S and M play can take quite some time. It's it's not a quickie. Um, it's about a ritualistic experience between two people. One person being dominant, another person being submissive. Don't confuse that with one person being strong, another person being weak. It's not. Very often you will realise that it's the submissive who wields the real power because they are the one who are giving that power away. Anyway, enough of this. This video is going to focus very quickly on ropes, chains, and restraints. Rope, the first thing to remember about rope is it burns. If it pulls across your skin, when you go to buy it, test it, pull it through your hands. If it hurts, don't buy it. These are specially made silk ropes. You can Google it. You can go to most um, adult <laughs> adult toy shops and buy quality silk rope. It's expensive, um, but the benefits are numerous. One, it's nice. It's soft. It's beautiful. Two, won't burn. Three, most importantly, easy to untie. Do not ever by rope that once you've tied a knot you will find it difficult to untie this stuff is like a twine people use this for lots of different things in S&M play they use it in kind of like nipple play and things this A is difficult to untie quickly and B can hurt like mad um, under certain circumstances because it is quite abrasive this type of stuff again be wary of this type of stuff. I don't know if I can show you properly. It's the stuff that has the nylon insert. It might feel nice and soft at first touch, but two things can happen with this. One is, yes, it does burn. You will get rope burn from this. And two is a tight knot in this will be very difficult to untie. The reason I mentioned untying knots is because of safety, not just in terms of your play partner becoming uncomfortable uh, but also as a, as a very very quick release if anyone feels emotionally insecure quick release undo the knots take a breather talk about it so that is why rope is really important the type of rope that you use is really important 
Next, I'm going to go very briefly onto chains. Now, there's obviously different types of chains that you can buy. The most common that you will find in places like B&Q is welded link chain. I don't know if we can focus on this very well. The thing to be very wary of is the welds, where the chains, chain links are welded. I don't know if you can see on here, but these are actually quite sharp. This is only a small chain. If you go for bigger chain, some of those welds can be like razor blades. Very dangerous. You don't want really to hurt people in play. It is about play. It is about something more sensual than actually finding that you've just scratched all your skin from very badly welded chain. So look carefully at the chain that you buy, especially from places like B&Q, because it's designed for, you know, securing your bicycle or something. This type of chain, very, very good. I don't know if the camera is going to focus in on it. You'll notice that the welds are very smooth. Okay, that's very, very important to have smooth welds on the chain. This particular chain, I like this particular chain, uh, A, because it's got the, um, the dog collar catch on each end um, and avoids the need for any other kind of connection. And all of the welds are nice and smooth. The last thing you want is to scratch your play partner. Have a look at that. Okay, it doesn't actually show up overly well on here, but that again. Find a better one. That is sharp. Okay, can you see how sharp that is? Don't buy that type of chain for play. Buy that type of chain to secure your bicycle. One of the better forms of chain is this. I can't remember what it's called. However, there are no, the camera's not really focusing very well on it. There are no sharp welds. The other thing to remember about chain is that not all chain is welded. Some chain is just bent. This one is bent and partly welded. No, 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 sorry, no, this one is just bent. What you don't want to do is catch your hair or skin in any of that. Imagine catching your hair in there. That would be unpleasant. Okay, so again, think about the quality of chain that you buy. Um, this particular piece of apparatus, I'll, I'll, I've decided I'm going to do a couple of these um, video lectures. Uh, I'm going to cover this is a collar I'm going to cover collars later um, but I'm just going to speak now we've done chains um, I'm just going to speak very briefly about restraints and the type of restraints which are available this type of restraint this is a cuff sort of like a hand cuff and it's made of leather the thing that I don't particularly like about this for people new to the scene is that A, you cannot quickly adjust it and B, it doesn't use very quick release padlocks. I'll show you what a quick release padlock is in a moment. But these, you need to be able to release your partner as quickly as possible, both in terms of right, when you put a restraint around somebody and they become aroused, the heart rate increases and the, the body swells up. So if you've put that quite tightly around somebody's wrist, it can then start to restrict the blood flow. So you need to be able to adjust that quickly. For that very reason, this is why I prefer, I'm gonna just move these out of the way for the moment. I prefer that if you're new to the scene you perhaps look at using these types of restraints these are velcro and they're foam lined the reason these type of restraints are good are that you can remove them very very quickly and you can loosen them very very quickly if you're starting to play with an snm relationship you need to take it gradually and learn gradually if for any reason whoever the submissive person is within that 
relationship feels uncomfortable you need a very very quick way to release them that's about it's not just about physical safety it's not just about restricting blood flow it's about that trust that if they feel at all uncomfortable that you can release them quickly I just want to come back to this chain and this chain is attached to two gauntlets and these are the sort of gauntlets that that will go on a hand uh, and then you won't be able to use your fingers again these particular gauntlets you could just use a pin uh, in there or something but these particular gauntlets come with a padlock I will guarantee if you go and buy a padlock from B&Q it will probably come with two keys always keep a key safe where you know where it is because the time you need that key is the time you won't be able to find it these padlocks are different these are specially designed padlocks for the S&M industry and if you just pull on that it will open whoops <laughs> can't do that with one hand with my finger but if I was to just to perhaps I'll show you down here this might be easier these are specially designed for the S&M industry that is locked but just pulling on it will open it like that, like that. <laughs> I'm doing this one-handed there are lots of things I can do one-handed <laughs> and uh, filming uh, filming isn't one of them but that is the type of padlock that you should try to find I would suggest you buy the cheapest travel padlocks possible because they're, they're easily broken again because of a you might have restrained someone too tightly but b they may feel uncomfortable with the experience if that happens if the safe word is invoked immediately release that situation same thing goes for things like handcuffs and and my friend who um, who arranges for me to do the lectures etc uh, very kindly gave me these they come with keys what's quite nice is that you can uh, attach the key to a collar so that the person always has the key but the whole point of these is they are handcuffs but you don't need the key to undo them okay there's a little catch here which if you push that they would just open sorry I, I can only do this I can't really do this one-handed but that is the catch there so again it's about physical and emotional safety other types of restraints these are, this is quite an interesting one this is um, for hands and legs again it uses the velcro fastenings so it can be easily adjusted again the manacles and chain velcro soft lined easily adjusted highly important especially when using something like a spreader bar okay a the quality of the chain b the quality of the manacle itself need to be comfortable soft easily and quickly released finally for those who are going to go and see um, 50 shades of grey you will notice that one of the big important things and this is what v and q are also pushing is is about tape do not please please do not use gaffer tape or duct tape as it's called or masking tape or insulation tape by and this is called bondage tape now it's not sticky but it sticks to itself if that makes sense okay so that won't stick to me but if you wrap someone in that it will stick to itself again if you're going to wrap someone in tape always put a little fold at the end so that you can find the end quickly to release them if you need to now this specialist bondage tape is about 10 quid a time and again thanks for the person who arranges for my lectures Oops. <laughs> has sent me because they know that I like purple purple rope um, I'm gonna do collars tomorrow uh, collars and other restraints tomorrow purple handcuffs purple bondage tape here's an idea okay cling film 
bondage tape. Ten quid a roll. Ten quid a roll. It's a good industry, good profit margin. What about using cling film? Cling film's great. I tell you what you do, you get a bread knife and you chop it down into little bits like this. You then have perfect bondage tape. It's cling film. It won't hurt. Doesn't stick to the body. If you use gaffer tape or duct tape or masking tape, it hurts when you remove it. So don't use that form of tape. Cling film is perfect. Bondage tape, £10 a time, perfect. Do you know what? This is just a piece of silk, silk strip. When you're experimenting, if you're new to this form of play, think about the sensuality, not the sexuality. Think about the beautifulness of this silk against the skin. Okay. Handcuffs can be uncomfortable, really cut in, nasty, horrible, uncomfortable. Lots of manacles, again, the chains can be uncomfortable. If you use these nice Velcro foam lined restraints, it's comfortable and safe and quick to release. And that is the most important thing to remember. When you're learning to play is keep it safe, both psychologically and physically. Don't tie knots you can't untie quickly. Don't place restraints too tight because the body will expand as, as the heart rate increases. Be very, very emotionally tuned in to your partner. If you're the dominant, be tuned in to the submissive. It's about sharing an experience in your minds, right? It's what happens between the ears more than what happens between the legs. So think very, very carefully. I'm not, I'm not saying don't go and buy it, stuff from B&Q or um, Home Depot in America or um, Walmart or Wix in the UK. Okay, I'm not saying don't go and buy stuff from them because they'll sue me. What I am saying is when it comes to things like rope, okay, you're sharing a very important part of your emotional and physical and intellectual and sexual life with another person. Buy some quality rope. Show them the respect of buying some quality rope. Rope which is comfortable, which is soft, which is easy to untie if you need to. Right, the whole S&M scene, the whole fetish scene is about trust. It's about dignity. It's about respect. Okay. It's not just about tying someone up and fucking them. Okay. Forget that. But if you are going to engage, uh, come back to where we started. Keep it safe. Lube and condoms. Keep it safe and keep it fun and it can be the most intense and beautifully emotional experience for many people but if you feel uncomfortable in the slightest ensure that you have negotiated with your partner a very very quick exit that's all I'm gonna say tomorrow I'll cover things like collars ball gags etc and maybe uh, maybe toys um, but for now, this is this is just the when you buy, be careful what you buy. And and seriously, look, cling film, a pound a roll. You can get four if you chop that up with a bread knife. You can get four lots of bondage tape. Start your play gently. Enjoy it with your partner. Ensure that you've got safety mechanisms so that it doesn't become abusive. And always remember there are beautiful, beautiful ways to restrain your partner in a way that can be soft and gentle and respectful. It's symbolic. And if you really, really want to know how strong the symbolism can be, just try some, sometime, tie someone's thumbs behind their back with a single thread of silk, something that they can break so easily. But the point is about that restraint it's about the symbolism uh, now I've written about this for many years 
this probably will be the strangest of my video 365s. I hope if you go and see Fifty Shades of Grey that this video will help you to be a little bit more safe and a little bit perhaps more um, in control and, um, and happy and enjoy. Remember though that the S&M scene isn't for everybody. All right, sometimes just cuddling, tickling, right? You don't have to tie people up. But if you do, do it safely, do it with respect, do it with trust. The most important thing to remember is it's a shared experience between two people. And the most powerful of emotions can come from this type of play activity. Uh, another, in, in another video, I might discuss lifestyle. Uh, this is about play. Lifestyle is slightly different. Um, but this is about play, so play safe. That's my video 365 for today.